Yeah, this scarf is definitely a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome back. I wanted to just quickly record because we are about to wind these yarns and I need to do this intro first before I move on. Winding, caking, we're caking, we're caking these into cakes. We're winding them into cakes. How about that? If you saw my one of my last videos on my channel, I'll put the link up here or it'll pop up in the corner. This colorway in particular I've already used before and I've made a sweater, it's called the Campfire Sweater and it was called Indigenous Excellence by Knitted Wit, Hand Dyed Yarn. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, four ounces, 420 yards, hand wash, lay flat to dry. The new Her Story colorway, and this one is called Being of Good Mind, same stats as the other one. <laughs> So we have our cake wound up. Check that beauty. Look at that. Things that describe this yarn to me. Checkerboard cowboy. Marshmallow over a bonfire. The different colors you can see on some corn. It's, a, it's definitely a November colorway. Today we are going to do my favorite new thing to do with hand dyed yarn to get the most out of this type of yarn because it does cost more than your typical big box store yarns. So I want you to, if you do invest in it, I'm going to help you uh, try and get the most out of it. So how many projects can we get out of one thing? And what I'm going to combine it with is this. Obviously, we are using Fisherman's Wool from Lion Brand Yarn once again. This is definitely top three, if not one of my most favorite yarns to use especially to combine with hand dyed yarn because it's in the same fiber family, 100% wool. And this is a 75-25 blend. So you keep it in the fiber family and you know, it's not too thick, but it does give it some dimension playing around with the different yarn sizes. Today, what I'm going to do is let that, if you saw my last video, I'll let it pop up somewhere here. I already used this to create a Yoda and baby Yoda inspired uh, cowl and hat. Also using only one ball of hand dyed yarn. This is what the swatch looks like, already worked up. And so I think that's gonna look really, really nice. So sit back, relax, as Pamela's Crochet would say, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and let's get into some yarny goodness, Lion Brand Fisherman Wools, and Knitted Wit Hand Dyed Yarn. Whew, all right, so it has been after work. It is a long day, and I just need to unwind. Also, I shaved. Do you guys like it? Do I look younger? <laughs> I worked ahead on the infinity scarf that I'm making, which I apologize. It's just one of those things. Guys, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I really do try to record as often as I can as I'm working. You know how it is. Once you are crocheting, you literally zone out. And after a couple hours, few hours, you realize, oh, wait, I forgot to record. So that's exactly what happened. But wha-bam, wha-bam, wha-bam. Look at that. Ooh. So this is so far what I'm working. I'm gonna explain it to you. So in case you wanna follow along, you can. Everything I do is just super simple crochet stitches. You don't need to know complicated things. And it's literally just like a puzzle, or at least that's how I see it when I freehand. How can I make these puzzle pieces work together? So anyways, let's go over what I have done. Sidebar, I've washed my hair three times with shampoo, like a deep washing. And this color is not fading. I'll put it somewhere on the screen, the actual like numbers and stuff that I've been doing. But anyways, row number one, foundation, half double crochet. That's all that is. Then you're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six rows of half double crochet of your variegated yarn. Then you do one row of half double crochet back in the fisherman wool. So where you do, so after you do half double crochet, you're going to do window pane of half double crochet. And with the hand dyed yarn, you're gonna switch back. That's where you do a double window pane crochet, double crochet of window pane. The first one, fisherman wool, which is to keep it nice and low and the, the, the bars aren't that high. It's in fisherman wool, that's only half double crochet. And then the hand dyed yarn is double crochet window pane. And here is the same diamond stitch technique that I showed in my last video. Go ahead and check that out. A little hint on that part. 
is that when you start, I started it with a, oh my God, why is it like that? I started it with one double crochet here. So only two are here at the end. And then I skipped two stitches of the window pane and I'm following the window pane because if you notice, the diamond goes directly above the bar, the, the double crochet. And then when you skip over two, it's on the right side. And then when you skip over two, it's gonna be on the left side right left right left so that's a nice little way that you can tell if you're doing it right is that these diamonds will be on the right left right left of the double crochet underneath it i'm very interested to see how the rest of it plays off but so far oh so nice it feels so good on oh, your skin and it's just fall color uh, to clarify in terms of the hooks i don't think i mentioned it and when i am using the hand dyed yarn i am using an e 3.5 millimeter hook and when I switch over to the fisherman wool, I am using a H hook, five millimeter hook. Did my little way to remind myself where I'm going is that two of the window panes, these two, okay, are on the side of the diamond stitch. You see that? Okay. And then this one is on the highest point of the diamond. It's on the side of the diamond. Chain one, because we're doing window pane, remember. So every time you finish, chain one, then it's gonna be on the highest point. Double crochet, chain one, then it's gonna be on the side. Chain one, then it's gonna be on the other side. Double crochet, chain one, then in the middle. Cool, so that's how it's gonna look. Check that out, guys. I don't know if it's showing up because of the lighting, to get it closer, yeah, let's get closer. Look at that. So you see, you get the diamond stitch and then you have your window pane on the bottom and on the top. So once you're done doing the window pane, you're gonna realize that you need to bring it back because your other yarn, I don't cut my yarn anymore. My aunt actually taught me to just bring it up as you work your way. So I haven't cut it yet, but my yarn is on this side. So when I finished the window pane, I realized, oops, I gotta come back to the other side. I like to just balance things out and repeat what I do on the bottom. So here I did window paint in half double crochet. So I did a window pane in half double crochet here. And I think I have a half double crochet complete row after that. So that's what I'm gonna do. Don't forget, so I made an executive decision after finishing the half double crochet to balance this. That is the logic behind that. I'm just adding another half double crochet window pane stitch. Half double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, half double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch. You know the drill. I just finished the other side. I put a stitch marker on there by the lovely purple yarnivore. I'm on my other side and I'm literally just going to pick up this last stitch here in the corner through. The yarn is right here and I'm just pulling it through and I'm starting from there. Chain one. You can chain one if you want um, so that way you know you have like a foundation and then you chain another one so that's your actual chain one and then you just continue from there and this is just going to be a row of half double crochet <sighs> good morning it is the next day i do not want to stay up too late working on this just a quick update i am on the second row of half double crochet here at the top to balance out the bottom. In the bottom, I did six rows of half double crochet and then a half double crochet row of fisherman wool, which I think I'm going to replicate up here. And I have my coffee. My pancakes. This is my I just woke up face. Curl my hair a little bit. There we go. How's that? Boo! Okay, so before I continue what I'm trying to do, I'm doing this new technique. I'm trying to do the, um, I don't know if you know, it's kind of like an army V. Sometimes you see them on some of their patches. And it's, I'm using it with three rows of the, I don't know if it's showing up, three cables right here. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I'm just going to show you how I'm doing that because I'm not quite sure if it's going to turn out the way I want to. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to get some cool sideways line cables anyways but hopefully this does work out. Essentially what I'm doing is there's six half double crochet stitches in between each of the three cable sections. Once you reach there, so one, two, three, four, five, six, you're gonna go ahead and do one, two, three, yarn over, 
wherever you see the empty space, there's a half double crochet stitch directly underneath it in the first row of the half double crochet. Okay, so you're looking at the first row down right here. And then you're gonna skip over two, one, two, and on the third one, connect it there for a front post, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. Then you're gonna half double crochet in the next open stitch. So it's gonna look like you're going behind it. You don't wanna leave any gaps. And the same thing, one, two, three, yarn over. Then you're just gonna find the next cable, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Then fill in the gap, half double crochet, last one, and that's it. And you're gonna get these cool diagonal cables, and then you're gonna add six half, you're gonna go ahead and do half double crochet in the next six stitches. Oh my God, that took forever. Don't you hate it with the rows? Just take forever to do. All right. <clears throat> Before I forget, uh, when you're working your way back, so essentially what you have to do is you have to go up three rows and then you're going to do the cable going across all three rows. Great news, guys. It actually worked out exactly how I wanted it to come out. Do you see that? Do you see the arrows? Do you see those arrows pointing? Do you see them? Isn't that cool? <gasps> Look at that. Look at those arrows. There you go. Look at that. Ooh, that is so cool. That is so cool. Now I'm going to do my two row, my row of half double crochet. Or is it two? No, it's one. My one row, and then I'm officially going to be done with this. I'm going to close it up on the ends. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm not going to cut it. So I'm not going to cut it because I'm going to connect it now. It should be, everything should be nice and even. Just follow along. If you really, really want, what you can do is what I do with my sleeves. So you can go down one side, slip stitch to the other, go down that side, just to give it a border, like of the same yarn, fiber, and then you can connect them both. That's one way of doing it or you could just connect them right now as is. Uh, I might add one row to it just because I want to clean it up and I wanna hide my ends as well. All right, so I close it on one side, so it should look like this. You should have, you know, one side closed here and I just slip stitched. And now these two that are open, now I'm going to do my typical normal closing method, which is uh, a link in the description down below. It's this channel has showed me how to do kind of like this squiggly line technique one one and oh, get in there two cool I'm gonna close this up and guys our cowl is officially done so let me just hide this end there we go guys check that out look at that Ooh, very good you have that nice little seam with a squiggly line on top. Look at that. Beautiful on one side. Oh, hold on. Well, on one side. Oh my God, I keep forgetting my ends. Mm. Mm. One side, two side. Nice and subtle. Ultimate test, guys. Here we go. So this is what it looks like. Nice and loose. Give it the twist. Oh, yes. Perfect great length it could be a little bit wider but if you open up the neck part when you wrap it you should be fine in terms of covering surface area yeah it covers up your back you could make it wider i might make it wider i might add one more row here's the scarf in all its sunny glory check it out check it check it out what do you guys think How does it look? The sunlight and in the shade. Oh my God, in the shade, it really does pop out the colors. <laughs> Welcome back. So it is the end of the day. I went to work, I'm back home. I gave you guys a little test run when I went to the mail. Joined my new Alpha Elite clothes, what what? I'm very happy with it, I am. However, I made an executive decision that it is not wide enough. It does photograph well, like this does look good, but in terms of how I like a scarf to feel. 
it's not quite there yet. It's a little, this just seems too decorative and not really functional. And I like for my scarves to be both functional and look great. So I'm just going to add, I don't know, maybe I have this much left of the hand dyed yarn and I still have a lot left of the fisherman wool. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Should I stop or should I not? But for right now, in the purpose of this video, I will end it with this because I actually do want to make, I want to try and make a beanie out of what's left. But anyways, this is the scarf. You can use it and wear it in so many different ways. And because of the playfulness of the stitches, like you always get a little peekaboo of everything and you can see everything quite nicely. And yeah, this scarf is definitely a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of Lion Brand Yarns Fisherman Wool with hand dyed yarn by Knitted Wit. This is the November Her Story colorway. Remember she makes a particular colorway available only to local yarn shops on her website. Every month dedicated celebrating a female doing the first to do something. It was made using an E hook for the hand dyed yarn and a H hook whenever I would use a Fisherman Wool. I will alternate between these two. And that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys like this, and I will try and make a matching beanie eventually. My utmost personal goal to end the year between now, the beginning of November, to Christmas, I want to try and get 25 projects done and uploaded here on the channel for you all. So that way, technically, you'll have at least, you'll have options to create projects for your friends and family this holiday season. Hopefully you are enjoying the content on this channel. If you are, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It is the best way you can support this channel. If you want to support a little bit more, click on that join button to see what extra additional perks I offer to my members. Not only that, make sure you check in the description box below always for my any information that I have to share with you. I have an Etsy shop and you can go ahead and save it there and be ready for my first update of project bags. It's coming super, super soon. Here's a little preview. Oh, I have a Ravelry page as well. So you can go ahead and save my profile. I am almost done writing some of these patterns to upload and see how that's gonna go. Thank you. Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you ever do any of my projects, I will be more than happy to see them. So make sure you tag me on Instagram at CPT Limon. And yeah, let me know if you recreate any of my projects. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much to all the members of the Limon Crochet channel. You guys make this experience so much fun and you give help me give lots of purpose to and direction of what I'm doing on this channel. So thank you so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. But I would like to give a special shout out to our Inner Circle and Influencer members. So let's start off with our Limon Inner Circle. Quick shout outs to Cocktails and Crochet with Coco. We also have Karen Miller in the house. And let's not forget our influencers, Araceli Pintado, Noemi Torres, and Blanca Valtierrez. Thank you so much. Everyone, I knew we have such a great time in the live. I will also be making an announcement on my official bags. So if you would like to save my Etsy shop, I will leave that in the description box below. My first update will be soon. So hopefully you guys enjoy what I'm doing. It is just something extra to help support my law school endeavors. And it's just an easy way for me to, a creative, it's a, it's a creative outlet for me to, to give you guys something you guys can own made by me by my hands. And who knows, maybe it'll turn into something bigger. So if you guys support this yarn, this uh, if you guys support my project bag endeavor, we shall see how far we can take it. But yeah, thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next video.